Well, here I am working on the project roadmap for Raid Finder. Uh, this comes at the request of my publisher. They're basically like, hey, let's have a roadmap. Let's have like a basic plan for the next, till we get this thing released, right? And for me, it really helps because it kind of helps me be a little bit less uh, willy-nilly about my development, a little bit more focused. And, um, and also it allows you as the player of this video game to kind of have an idea of when things are coming out. Um, so check this out. I've basically did some research on, uh, what makes a roadmap? What are the best practices for a roadmap? And it's a bunch of gobbledygook basically for business types, uh, for people that are part of huge organizations, right? And for, so for me making a project roadmap for Wraithbinder, where I'm a one person making a video game, I make all the art, the music, the programming, everything. Um, it's a little bit simpler for me to think about the development and things like that. However, uh, that's not to say that you shouldn't um, think about your project ro roadmap from the perspective of whoever's going to be reading this, right? So in this case, there's going to be uh, three different audiences for this project roadmap, right? The first one is for my publisher. Here's here's a roadmap of the project. Here's where we're going to be at. Hopefully, by these mile these milestones will be reached by these points, these time windows, these ranges. And for myself, uh, that's another part of the audience, right? I'm the developer, so or you could think of that as the development team. That's also your audience for the project roadmap. So my team is myself, and uh, this is a great thing for me to be very focused about uh, hitting, um, you know, hitting getting all the things together I need to make the alpha version of the game and getting bringing together the early access version of the game and the release version of the game. Um, and the third audience would be you, the player, or the person watching me just develop, you know, and you're tracking my development of this video game. Um, this is for you as well. Check it out. Here's where, here's where um, hopefully Wraithbinder will be by the end of 2020, by the end of 2021, and onward. Um, so there's the three audiences. Uh, the, another big thing I learned from just researching what is the best practice for making a project roadmap is to, uh, it's kind of up in the air. Like some people think, oh, you shouldn't have any actual realistic date, like actual dates on your, your timeline. Some people think, yeah, you definitely should have time uh, dates on your timeline. And I think the best of both worlds there is to sort of provide like, a time window for your dates. So you're not locking yourself into a certain date, which becomes unrealistic, right? You're trying to say, oh, uh, Wraithbinder will be alpha by September 15th, 2020. Maybe it will, maybe it won't, right? But I think it's a little bit wiser to apply a date range there. Maybe you're gonna be have a super fast time schedule for that for that section of your development and bam, you get it out earlier, right? That That's hitting it at the, earliest part of the time window and then maybe there's a whole bunch of delays and things you didn't expect or just stuff you really wanted to put in content you wanted to add that really makes that alpha version awesome maybe it takes a little bit longer right so what I've done here is I basically have provided a best estimate I went through and like uh, organized this into actual one week periods right of developing the entire video game um, and that kind of gave me a good estimate for what um my best estimate let's not call it a good estimate it's just the the best thing i could possibly manage at this point for as far as an estimate goes for how long each phase would take and then i took that and divided it by 1.5 to get sort of like an aggressive or a fastest time and then i multiplied it by 1.5 ish to get the um uh, the most realistic or slowest time you can get so that's how we've got the wraithbinder roadmap out into three different three different possible times for each one of these different phases so here's where alpha could take alpha could be done by the middle of um q3 this year alpha could take up to the middle of q4 of this year and then starting along those same lines as far as what got finished in the alpha version the early access version the most aggressive the fastest timeline could be q1 of 2021 or it could be all the way heck in Q3, right? Um, and you can see that this realistic uh, time window for the early access period of Wraithbinder starts at the realistic end of the alpha period, right? So realistic lines up there and there. And um, same with your release, right? The most aggressive time window starts here 
where this aggressive window time window ends and same thing for the realistic so the realistic release window is actually going off the end of this whole uh roadmap visualization and i wanted to just keep it focused on this best estimate and aggressive versions because i think i think i can hit the best estimate right this is the bet this is me guessing as best i possibly can and all the all the years I've made video games have been making games for over like almost 25 years now. And um, that makes me, I don't know, I have some experience, you could say, making a video game, finishing video games. Finishing video games especially is something very, very time consuming. So that's why this release window can be so big, right? Because so much stuff can happen when you're getting to the release portion of your game, especially because you're dealing with console versions coming in, trying to do a multi-platform release you're trying to do work with teams you, that's like you're trying to uh respond to feedback from players in your early access you're trying to handle bugs and you're trying to create a trailer you're trying to do all this kind of stuff that push the adds a lot onto your plate during a release so that's the one that can really slip the most i would think from my experience so yeah and uh, so then another thing that you should that uh, is the best practice for making a project roadmap is to um is to consider creating multiple versions of your roadmap. Uh, so for me, there's really two main audiences that are gonna read this. One is my publisher, and one is sort of myself, right? Or you could consider that the sales and marketing end of things and the development end of things. So I basically created sort of a, a sales and marketing um, version of the, of the timeline. This is that page right there, kind of this is like, oh, oriented towards them. It doesn't go into too much detail on development. It's really focused on the the milestone dates, the estimates for those windows, and also the goals for each phase of the game. And then we go into a more detailed development version of the timeline, which is focused on people like myself or people um, that are going to be helping me out getting it uh, released on consoles like my developer or sorry my publisher they're going to have some developers that are going to work on this game too so maybe this might they might be reading this too at some point um, and then of course the designers over there too they there's usually a designer that helps me out uh, making the, the on songbringer it was the amazing tom petalino um, who who I did have provided a ton of design feedback as well as all the Kickstarter backers and people that watch the live stream. We've got a lot of design input from them too. So uh, this is a little bit of a different project because I haven't done a Kickstarter to start it. Um, so it's kind of, it's a little bit more freeing in that sense too. Um, but the whole point here is that we've got a development version of the timeline. We've got sort of a sales and marketing version of the timeline. And this development one, like I was saying earlier, goes into one week, two week, up to three or four week periods where I'm going through each item of what um, is gonna have to be done. Like a boss is gonna take two weeks, for example. Um, and that all adds up to my best estimate. So there you have it. The Wraithbinder roadmap, some thoughts on maybe creating a project roadmap for your own video game or your own software project, right? If you're gonna be part of a team, you're probably gonna wanna make this a little bit more of a flexible type thing where you, you would probably wanna use some software to create this. I just use Photoshop to go ahead and create this document, make this visualization. But there's tools out there where you can actually, uh, like, inst like actually use software to create these time windows and break those time windows down into smaller elements and stuff like that there's way better software than this you can even assign certain tasks to certain people that's where you'd want to that that's where if you had a big team or even a small team any kind of team um you'd want to use some software probably to do that but i think the whole the the main points that i learned uh from making a, a, this project roadmap as far as general guidelines on how best practices to make a, your own project roadmap is one um uh, consider your audiences two create multiple versions for those audiences or you know multiple sections for those audiences and three to make it visual right make it visual and keep it simple those are those are that's kind of three and four or maybe just three wrapped up into one thing of simplicity right this this first page right here keeps it really simple provides a nice visual document and um, and I, I suffered, 
at, uh, from not doing that at first. At first, when I first started tackling this roadmap, I went super detail oriented and I had four different phases and all of blah, 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 blah. It was way too detailed and it was harder to follow and it was harder for me to create a, a, a best estimate for how long each uh, phase and each sub project of each phase would take. But when I simplified it down to um, just alpha, early access, which is beta basically, and release, um, really helped. And also trying to really refine every bit of this document and make it um, make it as, as concise as possible. So there you have it. Thanks for watching this video and we'll catch you next time.